around the world. Engineers and architects, constructors and owner-operators are using Bentley's software solutions to design, build and operate the infrastructure that sustains our economy and our environment. Together, we are advancing infrastructure. Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Student Steel Bridge Competition National Finals Awards presentation. My name is Christina Harbour and I am the Director of Education for the American Institute of Steel Construction. First, I'd like to congratulate this year's finalists. We had nine schools that participated in our supplemental competition format and we also had 25 schools that participated in our Compete from Campus format. I'd like to thank the Rules Committee. Uh, not only did they write rules for two competitions this year um, and answer the clarifications, but they also judged the competitions. Um, and most importantly, um, they consulted with AASC to make sure that we had a program this year that would work for students. In particular, I would like to thank a few people. Uh, Jason McCormick, the chair of the committee, uh, John Peruki, our national head judge, and Chris Garrell, our national scorekeeper, for all of the extra work that they did. I'd like to thank our national program sponsors. Despite the pandemic, uh, they still sponsored. Um, they still showed up for, for AISC and for our students. Um, you know, they recognized that the students uh, that they are, uh, that they're connecting to are the future of our industry. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Nucor, our steel level sponsor. Uh, they've also provided uh, the SSBC travel mugs. Um, so if you did not order one at the regional awards presentation, you still have a chance. So you can find that button on your screen and uh, place your order. Uh, just a warning, the uh, supplies are limited. So uh, put in your order as soon as possible. Um, I'd also like to recognize uh, Bentley Institute, our gold level sponsor, as well as SolidWorks, our uh, silver level sponsor, for not just providing funding, but also access to software that we know that students uh, like to use and that is used in the industry. I would like to thank our volunteers. Uh, we had a lot, a lot of volunteers at the regional level. We had, again, a lot of volunteers at the national level. Um, you know, some of our volunteers traveled to schools to uh, judge bridges in person on campus. And then we also had a number of volunteers that uh, did their work remotely. Uh, there is no way we could have pulled off a competition this year without you. So thank you very, very much. And I'd like to share a few thoughts on um, how I wish I, I could see you all in person. Um, Typically, the national finals is held over Memorial Day weekend, um, and, and the first event is aesthetics. Um, it's held in the afternoon, and we have all of the bridges on display at the same time. And that's the only time um, during the whole competition weekend that you'll see every bridge constructed all in one place. It is the best part of the competition for me because I can go around and talk to um, all of you students and ask you about what your challenges were this year, uh, what went right, what went wrong, um, and that is really, uh, really great. Um, I love running into students that I recognize from previous years. Um, a couple of years ago, a group of students from the University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez, uh, flagged me down, called out my name, uh, said hi, and that was really great to see them again. Um, I'd also seek out those new schools that are at the national finals for the very first time. And this year, that's the University of Texas at Tyler and the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Um, I'd ask you how it felt to be at the finals for the first time um, and, you know, what you learned this year and, you know, what you're looking forward to next year. And I'd also make some observations. I'd always see students taking pictures of other bridges. Um, on some sort of reconnaissance mission, maybe for next year, you know, to bring back some ideas. Um, I'd see students talking, not just to their own teammates, but to other, other students to find out, you know, maybe how they designed their connection, how, you know, what they did for fabrication. I love seeing that uh, exchange of information. It's, it's, it's really great. 
Um, I would talk to the faculty advisors uh, and, and see how the year went for them and, and to thank them for everything that they do for the competition. Uh, this is really the highlight of, of my weekend, this aesthetics event. It's the highlight of that competition. It is also the highlight of my year at AASC. That's how much I love it. Um, so I'm, I'm really missing out. I, I, I miss seeing all of you. Um, this is a little bit strange for me, this one-way conversation. Um, and, and the one thing that I do really want to make sure that I communicate to you is that I am so impressed by, uh, by your participation this year. I don't know what your motivation was um, individually. Um, maybe um, there weren't any, any other activities for you to participate in. Um, you know, maybe it was your way to uh, meet with other students and um, connect with other people, have some camaraderie in a time of um, isolation for some of you. Um, maybe you participate every year. And so you participated every year as a student and, you know, some pandemic is not going to stop you. And uh, maybe that's why that's why you did it. Uh, maybe, you know, some of you that actually got to physically build a bridge this year. Uh, maybe it was your escape from some dull online learning. Um, whatever your motivation was, I, I, I'm so impressed. I, I know that you had to overcome some obstacles this year in addition to your, your classwork and maybe your normal um, you know, levels of busyness that you experience as a student. I know you had to do a lot more this year to participate. And you didn't just participate, but you excelled. You succeeded, you excelled. Um, you're here at the finals, so congratulations. So with that, I'm going to pass you along. Um, I'd like to introduce you all to AISC President Charlie Carter. Good morning, I'm Charlie Carter, President of AISC. I am so happy we were all able to share the Student Steel Bridge competition again this year. I thank you all for doing all you had to do to participate and make it another special year in so many respects. In spite of the many ongoing challenges of the pandemic, I salute you all for what you accomplished and what you achieved. Strange times indeed, and yet I know you've all created experiences that you'll remember and reminisce about all the same. Think about that. You're the few who will be able to say, remember when we pulled off our bridge in the middle of a pandemic? I celebrate you, all of you, for that. As a special shout out, let me celebrate Missouri S&T and their team of play-by-play -play announcers you had in your construction and loading videos. They were really fun for all of us who got to watch them. In fact, I think you may have given us an idea for future national finals. Maybe we'll have our own version of Sports Center. How fun would that be? I wonder if Kirk Herbstreet knows anything about bridges. Also, special thanks for the spirit and commitment of those of you who made the supplemental competition work for your teams. George Washington University, New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology, the College of New Jersey, and the University of Massachusetts Amherst. It's wonderful that you found ways to make it work this year that way. Moreover, I celebrate all of you who were part of the 102 teams in all competitions and 31 who made it to the national finals. You are why we have the Student Steel Bridge competition and you inspire us with your work. Thank you and also I thank all the committees, volunteers and others who worked with teams and at regional, virtual and national competitions. You are key to the success of this event and we appreciate you all so much. Finally, it's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. Brad Dillman is Vice President of Engineering and Estimating at High Steel Structures in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. He's a member of the SSBC Rules Committee and also very involved as a volunteer in activities of AISC and the National Steel Bridge Alliance. I'm looking forward to Brad's presentation. Good afternoon. My name is Brad Dillman, Vice President of Engineering and Estimating at High Steel Structures, a steel fabricator based in Pennsylvania. I am very honored and excited to be part of the 2021 Student Steel Bridge Competition National Final Awards Presentation Ceremony. 
especially considering the fact that last year's competition was canceled due to the pandemic. I had the privilege of joining the Student Steel Bridge Competition Rules Committee last year. So in my first year on the committee, I had the great privilege of seeing firsthand some of the fantastic work by the teams in this year's competition. My objectives for this presentation are very simple. Get out of the way of the results. You haven't logged on to hear me. You've logged on to see the results of this great competition. And I certainly don't intend to stand in the way of that. Nevertheless, I want to take some time to celebrate with you your success and offer some encouragement regarding your next steps. To help put some perspective on this year's competition, let's look at some statistics regarding the number of participants. In terms of the number of participating schools, in the supplemental competition, 38 teams participated, nine of which made it to the finals. In the Compete from Campus competition, 80 schools participated. 25 of those are in the finals. A number of schools participated in both competitions. So overall, the total number of unique schools participating in this year's competition was 102 and 31 of those are in the finals. The number of participating students is estimated at over 1,000, a fantastic number of students who are willing to participate and compete in this year's competition. Certainly, there are some notable achievements in this year's competition. Two schools are in the national finals for the first time. Congratulations, a great achievement for the University of Massachusetts Amherst and the University of Texas at Tyler. The most consecutive appearances in the national finals is held by University of Wisconsin-Madison at over 20 years consecutively making it into the national finals. We're not able to pinpoint the exact number of years due to some gaps in the records of early competitions, but we know it's over 20 years. Again, congratulations to these three schools. Tremendous accomplishments. I offer my congratulations to all teams that participated in this year's competition. And I urge you to recognize and reflect on your achievements in this year's competition, whether this was your first or one of many. As you know, this year's competition was like no other and simply cannot be viewed outside the lens of the global pandemic. All teams chose to compete despite the challenges presented by the pandemic. This is notable in and of itself. I'm a firm believer in the value of competition as it pushes all of us to improve, to excel, to grow. And your willingness to compete despite the challenges of the pandemic are noteworthy and you should be proud of that. Your teams displayed flexibility and versatility as the format of the competition was modified. You displayed ingenuity first in simply how to enter the competition and function as a team under the effects of the pandemic. But then also too ingenuity within the competition itself and how to solve the problem at hand. You certainly displayed teamwork. Working and competing as a team is an achievement and accomplishment in and of itself. Drawing on the diverse backgrounds, skills, and knowledge of your teammates. Working through disagreements and conflicts. Quite an achievement for all teams. And also, it's important to recognize the value of experiential learning. It yields knowledge and understanding that you would not have gained if you were focused on only one step of the project and only one that one specific area. So again, congratulations. What all of you have experienced and accomplished in this competition are some of the essential components of being successful designers, engineers, educators, administrators, communicators, marketers, in the world beyond your academic careers. 
I urge all of us, though, to consider ourselves blessed to have participated in this competition, to have worked side by side with some of the brightest minds in civil and structural engineering, to have had the opportunity to learn and expand our own knowledge. I also urge us to consider the responsibility that then comes with such blessings. I urge us to consider how we can use our blessings of education, of sharp minds, of great networks of colleagues to then bless others. I'd like to share with you an opportunity that I had to share some of my blessings with those who have some other needs that are unlike mine. In April of 2019, I had the amazing opportunity to serve through Bridges to Prosperity on a team organized by the National Steel Bridge Alliance, working on a pedestrian footbridge in Azure Dewey, Bolivia. Bridges to Prosperity is a global nonprofit organization headquartered in Denver, Colorado. B2P's goal is to end rural isolation and poverty by constructing footbridges. They've done work in 22 countries, including Haiti, Panama, Rwanda, Nicaragua, and Bolivia. More than 350 bridges have been built through B2P, and B2P has partnered with the AISC and NSBA to form and send bridge building teams to various areas of the world. I was fortunate enough to work on this fantastic team of colleagues in the bridge industry to build a footbridge in Bolivia. The team was composed of B2P staff, representatives of departments of transportation, consulting engineers, and steel fabricators. So, some of us were industry competitors, much like the teams in the Student Steel Bridge competition. But in this arena, in this setting, we were teammates drawing on each other's unique expertise, background, knowledge, and experience. So what was the scope of the NSBA team? It was simple. It was to build the superstructure for a 361 foot suspension bridge. Oh, and by the way, do that in 11 days. All the design was performed by B2P staff. All the materials, tools, and equipment was provided by B2P, either through donations or through purchases. We were simply the labor, show up and build the bridge. When we arrived on site, this is what we saw. The foundations and the substructures were complete. The tower false work was in place, ready for us to start building the superstructure. The need for the bridge quickly manifested itself as we witnessed members of the community walking through the river, carrying their young children on their sides or on their shoulders. In the rainy season, this is not possible. The water is simply too high. If passable, down trees will be used for the crossing. So the need and our mission quickly was made very real. The objective of day one of the bridge build was fairly simple in concept. Move each of the four steel tower legs into place on the substructures. So with great help from the community, we carried each of the four tower legs into place, setting them on wooden cribbings and putting them into place on the foundations. Day two was focused on preparing the tower for raising the tower legs, preparing the floor system and the suspenders of the bridge. The floor system was composed of back-to-back -back angles with wooden floor beams lag screwed to those angles. The hangers were simply rebar that were cut to length and bent to shape on a bending table and a bending jig that was made on site. Day three was a long day. However, it was a monumental day where we saw some visible progress on the pitch. We were focused on raising the two towers at each side of the bridge 
and running the main cables of the bridge. The towers were raised by using a cable and pulley system and a winch. Next, the four main cables were run. Each side of the bridge had a coupled set of two cables. So there were four cables total for the structure. The cables were delivered to the site in a pile, as you see on the left, and needed to be unraveled and manually drug through the river. The ends were raised up over the towers with the pulley system and then anchored to the backspan anchorages. This was the bridge at the end of day three. At that point, we were happy to simply have the cables up out of the river as we simply anchored the cables temporarily by manually pulling out as much sag as possible at the end of that day. On day four, we finished setting the cables to the correct sag finished building the suspenders and also the restrainer cables. The cable sag was set again by manually pulling as much sag out of the cables as possible and also using a winch to set the cables to the final elevation. Obviously we had a survey tower constructed on site to ensure the cables were at the right elevation. We attached the suspenders to all the floor beams and prepared the restrainers for launching all of the suspenders on the main cables. So at the end of day four, the main cables were at the correct elevation for launching all of the suspenders the next day. Day five, we began preparing the deck boards and started hanging and launching the suspenders from each face of the tower. At the front face of each tower leg, the suspenders were raised up the tower face, attached to the main cables, and launched out along the main cables toward mid-span. At the same time, the wooden floor system was prepared. The floor system was cut to length and pre-drilled so that it could be anchored into the floor beams. On day six, we finished hanging and launching the remaining suspenders and ran yet one more cable over each tower and anchored it to the anchorages. This cable served as our safety cable to which we connected our harnesses as we prepared to build the decking out across the bridge. On Easter Sunday, day seven, we removed the tower scaffolding in preparation to start launching and installing the bridge decking. Day eight, we started installing the decking by lagging it to the wooden floor beams. We worked our way from each tower out toward mid-span. Day nine, we finished the bridge decking as the teams met at mid-span. And we also prepared the fencing that would be run on each side of the bridge. The wind guys were prepared and installed on day 10. These guys are supplemental cables on both sides of the bridge and are attached to the bridge to provide lateral stability during wind loading. Day 11 was a very bittersweet day as it was the last day of the build on which we installed the fencing and cleaned up the site. The following day was a fantastic day of celebration with the community. A day-long celebration filled with speeches of thanks by the local community, by the local mayor, christening of the bridge by the local priest. One of our team members was fluent in Spanish and was able to share with the community. The day was full of wonderful dancing, great singing, and delicious food. It was a day of renewed optimism, of celebrating a triumphant partnership with the community and hope for the prosperity that this bridge offers the community. If you are interested in viewing more of the Bridges to Prosperity bridge build in Azure Dewey, Bolivia, 
There is a great video produced by the National Steel Bridge Alliance at the link shown. Each of you who participated in this year's Student Steel Bridge competition is now smarter and stronger than you were prior to the competition. I encourage all of us to consider how we can offer some of what we've gained to others. It does not need to be a bridge build in a foreign country, although that is a life-changing, fantastic experience. It can be as simple as helping your young neighbor who is struggling with her math homework, or reading to a child who doesn't have the opportunity to hear reading aloud. I encourage us to consider what we can give to others with our knowledge, our skills, and our expertise. To close, congratulations, well done on this year's competition. Now let's get to the results. Thank you, Brad. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the winners of the 2021 Student Steel Bridge Competition. Only the top three winners in each category will be announced. Full results will be posted to our website after the presentation. Here are the winners of the 2021 Supplemental Competition. In the category of Design, in third place, George Washington University. In second place, University of California, Berkeley. In first place, Oregon Institute of Technology. In the category of Analysis, in third place, Michigan Technological University. In second place, University of California, Berkeley. In first place, Oregon Institute of Technology. In the category of construction sequencing, in third place, California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo. In second place, University of California, Berkeley. In first place, Oregon Institute of Technology. In the category of video. In third place, California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo. In second place, Oregon Institute of Technology. In first place, University of California, Berkeley. In the category of public vote. In third place, University of Massachusetts, Amherst. In second place, Oregon Institute of Technology. In first place, University of California, Berkeley. And now the overall winners of the supplemental competition. In third place, Michigan Technological University. In second place, University of California, Berkeley. In first place, Oregon Institute of Technology.
Here are the winners of the 2021 Compete From Campus Student Steel Bridge Competition. In the category of Aesthetics, in third place, University of Alaska Fairbanks. In second place, Oregon Institute of Technology. In first place, University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez. In the category of Construction Speed. In third place, Youngstown State University. In second place, Lafayette College. In first place, University of Florida. In the category of lightness, in third place, University of Wisconsin Platteville. In second place, California State Polytechnic University Pomona. In first place, University at Buffalo. In the category of construction economy, in third place, Youngstown State University. In second place, Lafayette College. In first place, University of Florida. In the category of structural efficiency, in third place, University at Buffalo. In second place, University of Wisconsin Platteville. In first place, University of Wisconsin Madison. And now the overall winners of the Compete from Campus Student Steel Bridge Competition. In third place, and the recipient of $2,000 in scholarship funds, Youngstown State University. In second place, and the recipient of $3,000 in scholarship funds, Lafayette College. In first place, and the recipient of $5,000 in scholarship funds, University of Florida. And next, the winner of the Robert E. Shaw Jr. Spirit of the Competition Award. This award is presented to a team that demonstrates outstanding team camaraderie, professionalism, positive work ethic, and respect for their competition peers. The award is named for Robert E. Shaw Jr., who founded the Student Steel Bridge Competition in the spring of 1987 as a means of challenging university and college students to use their engineering skills to design, fabricate, construct, and test a scaled version of a steel bridge in a friendly competition. The winner and recipient of $1,000 in scholarship funds, University of California Berkeley, for their deep enthusiasm for the competition and the support displayed for their teammates. And finally, the winner of the Frank J. Hatfield Ingenuity Award. This award is presented to a team that shows the most engineering ingenuity in the design and or construction of their bridge based on the requirements of the competition rules. The award is named for Frank J. Hatfield, who was the chair of the Student Steel Bridge Competition Rules Committee during its first three decades of existence. He was responsible for orchestrating the many evolutions of the rules since the first Student Steel Bridge Competition in 1992 and was involved in the competition from its inception. The winner and recipient of $1,000 in scholarship funds, University of Alaska Fairbanks, for their unique truss with splayed ends featuring offset top cord and web members and connection to the bridge piers as well as an innovative twist lock connection. And that does it for the 2021 Student Steel Bridge Competition National Finals Awards presentation.
Thank you so much for joining me today. On behalf of AISC, we look forward to seeing you next year in person. Take care.